everyone, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Give us a thumbs up. Nick, th a thumbs up from Nick. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Hello there, everybody. We're about to start. Let's do it. All right. I'm your host, Turhan Kalak, with the Nitty Gritty Witty Committee. That is yours tr Can you move the fucking arm? I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. I Guys, excuse us, fast. Wait, wait, it's it's all part of the technical difficulties. Thank you, God. Thank you. I am your host, Turhan Kalak, with the Nitty Gritty Witty Committee. That is yours truly, and my co-host, Bill Lurch. We are the jazziest, snazziest, razzmatazziest tag team, ready to blow the doors right off the living room hinges. And if we don't do it with this sick fucking intro, then all there is to do is to get boomed on live with it. <laughs> Is that jazz? How what kind of music is, is that? <laughs> where are my headphones? Is that jazz? Get I you shit you together, Tron. Can headphones? I have those? Thank you very much. Um, oh, there they are. Awesome. Hello there, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on Boom Done Live. This is Turhan Kalak with my co-host, Bill Lurch. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Hello. So, um, Stella Valone is here, our lovely uh, uh, third mm -hmm. person that talks uh, sometimes on the show. Uh, she's a wonderful... Yeah, comes down. Come she, oh, she's nice. French, but she's multilingual. She's, she's French, actually but Italian. Yeah. You learn something new every show, Tarana. Well, how's everybody doing? So good. So good. That was yeah! <laughs> okay. That was the room. That was the room going crazy. Um, I had a speaking of crazy. I had a crazy, adventurous weekend. It started on Thursday. I just basically sent a text to my friend who I haven't seen in two years, an actor producer guy that lives upstate near yeah. uh, in Stone Ridge near Stone Ridge. Ros near Rosendale. Uh, kind of near Woodstock, kind yeah. of near Kingston and New Paltz. And he says, uh, his name is Jason. Jason, how you doing? Uh, I don't know if you can see me. Oh, there you are. There's the camera. Jason, um, he's going to be on the show maybe in a couple of months because he's doing a one-man show here in the city. Sweet. Um, talented guy, super talented. So I texted him and I said, hey, me and uh, my girl want to come up to uh, Ro uh, Rosendale. He, what are you I, doing? I, yeah, he goes, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I didn't expect him to respond. He doesn't respond right away, usually. It takes him like a couple of years. Is that because no. of the, the mountains or any kind of reason? Right. Is, is he's, still using, he's, he, he's still using a styrofoam cup with a string yeah. kind of service. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. he's got to sell Upstate New York. Yeah, yeah. So he, uh, he goes, yeah, dude, you need a place to stay? And I, I looked at my girl and I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> we do. Because we didn't, it was just like a random feeler text. And then... He goes, do you need a car? I go, oh, uh, I'm okay. sorry, I'm sorry. A buddy of yours, you said, hey, we're going up there. And he said, would you like a place to say score? Yes. And then I'm sorry, the second part was, do you need a car? Need a car. Okay, that's, it, that's so, nice. So we get up there. We finally get, we, we, we pack our bags. We go. Uh -huh. It's amazing from start to finish. We get there the first night. We, we take the car. It's a Volvo from like 30 years ago. Sweet. And it's raining. Like yes. on the way back, so our ride was cool. On the way back, the windshield wipers didn't work. We don't know. We didn't know that. <laughs> we weren't mad. We were just like so is in the dark, yeah. no lights, unfamiliar territory, scared. Right. You know, deer could be popping out, or a yeah. raccoon, or some type of big possum. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, yeah. but then so we didn't bitch. <laughs> no, we didn't bitch and whine about it. We were thankful to have a car. We weren't wet. We couldn't see. You know, but we very didn't. important question. Now I've been that yeah. guy. What did you What did you do to uh, wipe the rain off the windshield? Was it a towel? I, did your girlfriend have to go out and like? I, you know, we both stopped, did, took turns, and like tried to move the 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 oh, yeah, okay. and yeah, it didn't yeah. work. No, but we went slow. Mm. We prayed. That's good. We got under a gas station canopy. Waited. Yeah. Okay. We made love. You had sex in the car? No, no, we didn't Volvo? do no, that. It was a Volvo. I had sex in the Volvo. <laughs> we didn't. Okay. We didn't do that. Um, it didn't come to mind, actually. We were too well, scared. We can't, you can't scare me. Was it a five-speed? Automatic scared. or a five-speed? 
Um, it was automatic. Okay. You can't right. fuck when you're scared. They're chasing me. Let me go pull, rub one out. You just don't do that. Whoa. It's a beautiful, you know, folks. Yeah. You can't really, you can't really walk while you're having an orgasm too. You can't just go. <laughs> you ever try to do that? Oh my God, I'm coming. I'm arriving. I'm arriving. No. So anyway, we like went. I was in a Jerry Lee, uh, <laughs> Jerry Lee, not Jerry Lee, Jerry Lewis film that like yes. they cut that out. It was like he was drunk and he did that, but they, yeah. you can't put that I, in the film. Jerry, I, I want it in. He's all I, coked up. I have, I have been going a, on a whoa, run, whoa. I've been equated to, uh, to Jerry Lewis, uh, by the way, so that's an interesting comment. You look comment. nothing uh, like I know. So we also went mountain climbing. I mean, they, we were eating blueberries off of bushes that were growing out of these rocks. We picked them, like a thousand of them, went back, made um, blueberry muffins the next morning. Uh, what with kind of house do you have, like a rustic country type beautiful house? Beautiful rustic house. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't even hear. You can only hear, like, birds chirp and, like, you and know. singing, like, in... Uh, <laughs> What's the sound of the song of the South? Yeah, like it's like sound of sound of music here. You know, mm -hmm. you know, birds chirping, little Mary Poppins going on, and it's a really artistic town. I mean, we 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 saw some music, we we ate some good food, uh, all organic stuff. Um, we uh, I, I ran to this guy who has a drum shop that he ma he makes these like. Is it what, the, what was the name of the town again? Because it's, Stone Ridge. Stone Ridge. Okay, because there is like an artistic. Highly, I've heard there is a, kind of an artist community out there. It's the biggest. That whole area is the biggest artistic community in new york state revolving around music film right. arts like like artists and stuff in the whole state and i want to move there yeah, yeah i, I want to i didn't want to come back i got back this uh this afternoon around one o'clock i've been there since thursday i didn't want to come back i didn't want to do the show i wanted to do the show well, i just want wanted to do the show i want to do it up there with you guys I so can we can do it from remote. so yeah. so we're all moving Oh yeah, okay, is that it? All of us, yeah, we're all moving. Okay, I got cool. 16... How far is New Paul's though? That's like a, uh, two hours? A little no, bit? 15 minutes. 15 From where? Minutes. From here? You know the town I went to is an hour and 50 minutes, so less than two hours to get to. All right. New Paul's is 15 minutes. Town is great, great music. Uh, Kingston, great, great scene. Um, it's cool. Dude, awesome. Very nice. dude. Yeah. and I, you know what? Here's the best part. I had, I had an audition up there. I didn't even know oh, about yeah. it till, the, till like Saturday. A director came over to his house. I auditioned in the woods for a film, <laughs> and I yeah, just got a text about an hour that's ago. Scary. I got well, a text. I got a text about an hour ago that I got the part. No so way. I'm shooting it in there in a month or so. And oh, Jason, yeah. I just say. Hey, What's Jason. the name of your buddy? What's the name of your buddy? Who Jason who? There? who? My buddy's yeah. name is is my very talented buddy who let us stay over there. Yeah. His name is Jason Downs. Jason he Downs. Ha he has a wonderful, beautiful wife. Her name is Sophia Robb. I hope it's okay that I'm saying nice this, name. guys. And they have two beautiful children. You know, look the only reason why I asked her, hon, is because yes. I'm going to call him and say, hey, I'm coming up to Woodstock. And the next thing he's going to say is like, great, okay, so do you need a place to stay? And I'll say, yeah, my name is Bill. I know Turhan. He's going to say, do you need a car? I'm going to say, yes, but you better get those fucking windshield wipers first. <laughs> Okay, that's very that's good. how that's going to go down. That's very good. And I'm going to go out there confident. Yeah, so basically, I mean, we had a great weekend. I mean, it was adventurous. You know, my girl, she said, I want adventure. I'm like, oh, she's, <laughs> she's not a whine or two. She's like, I want adventure. You know, you got to show me the best. No, she's just like Pressure. very even keel. But you gave her the rain with the no windshield wiper. Rain, I mean, no that's, windshield wiper. That's rock dangerous. Cli rock climbing, blueberries, muffins. What going to do? Drum shop. Blueberries picked off the vine. Who knows? And, we did, a, and we did a screenplay reading up there with 30 oh, people yesterday. Yeah. Folks, it was, uh, it was fun. Filled. Turn write the book on how to do Woodstock that area in three days. Hot. Write the book. You've experienced the full. You've had the full experience. Well, it's now it's time minute. to make a little money. I, 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 we, we came up with a joke. We said what we should have. What we should do is like have a reality show where you get a couple, a different couple that goes through the same kind of like <laughs> bullet points that we went through and see how they do. Okay. Like you could have like a totally like Latina yeah. couple that's like I don't <laughs> like this shit. Let's fuck, fuck this blueberry coming out of the rock. Bullshit. It could also be like the Texas Chainsaw uh, Massacre where you, <laughs> you do, do that audition in the woods and you get your head chopped off. Oh, it could get really dark. And then you can have the French couple that keeps complaining all the time, right? Like you and your yes. your boyfriend isn't French no, though, right? But no. you weren't talking about you and your no, boyfriend. No, no, but yeah. you know how people... What, what, what would it? What would all the time? Like, do, do me a favor. Do a like a French couple fighting right now in France in French. Both of them no. Like on on a mountainside with blueberries. Just talk about it. Yes. No. You no, have to no, say no. yes in this improv. You, no, 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 no. How about the first rule of improv was what? <laughs> I, I, I took an improv class once, and the the teacher took like ten minutes. He's like, this, these are the rules, and you, you never say no. So the first thing I, I get on, uh, I, no. I go in front of the class, <laughs> and uh, the girl's like, uh, honey, let's go bowling. I go no. And it was that awkward silence. <laughs> she just looked at me like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> the teacher just said, no, we're not going bowling. Yeah, yeah. You're an electrician. No, I'm not. 
That's the silence I got at the class. So I was just approving the just, point. Uh, that was my awkward. Right? Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, okay. Stella. Continue. So, so Stella, is there something you will do in, in French for like 30 seconds? I don't even want to know the translation. Uh, I want you to like tell me uh, like. Well, in that particular in, in that particular situation, it would be ah oh, putain, ça fait chier. Ah oh, putain, merde. I mean, <laughs> oh, ça fait chier. <laughs> Did you just say so, something about? So how about if I went? How about if I went? I say, oh, now we're going. We're going to Stella Valone for the weather. For the weather in France. Stella Valone for the weather in France. So Stella, please. In French. No. No. Wow. You no, keep saying. Second. You keep saying no. Improv, you can't do our that. improv uh, exercises are not, not working prepared. tonight. Jared. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then I guess we gotta get moved to the part of the show. Any where French movies we should see? Anything French? Yeah. Uh, a French film that's out now we should go see. Oh, good question. Talking to the mic, you're like 15. Good question, good question, good question. There's something that, uh, ah, yes. uh, Renoir. 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 What's it about? It's about. It's a painter. Uh, yes. Renoir. Pierre Auguste de Renoir, the painter. Ah, yeah. Okay. Uh, is that like a biography? Is it a di uh, uh, I believe it's like a love story or something. I okay. think. Yeah. In, in fact, like, at yeah. the Rosendale Theater in that town, there was a movie showing, and it was Renoir. Yeah. So that's ah. interesting Renoir. that you brought that up. Ah. Whatever the case yeah. is. Yeah, now you want to speak French after I gave you two chances. Well, and you're like, no, no, no. How about say no? So speaking of uh, French and yeah. arts and all these things, we have a... a well, that's because... Yes. Go ahead. That's because we, French people always like to contradict. I know. Ah, yeah. We have a yeah. lot of <laughs> French culture. Emphasis on the word dick. 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 So, anyway. We have was, a, oh, Sam, we have a great guest today. Yeah, we prestigious do. Prestigious guest. Maybe... We uh, have probably the most legend. prestigious guest on our show, Egal Perry from Perry... Perry Capizio Dance Center. I can't believe he's on the show. He's outside right now, probably in the blistering humidity. And but I have to get weird with it first with my hip hop style yeah, and just doing that. So we're about to bring that on before he comes on. So um, yeah, we got to prepare and listen. Um, but I think my my boy Jamie on the bass can start figuring something out. Let's go, Jamie. Yeah, I, I think you might want to. Oh, I don't know. Feel it. I like it. Um, yeah. Yeah, feel me flow, everybody stop, everybody feel the room pop. We're about to do this, getting twisted on the microphone, getting blistered like we never felt in the end zone, catching footballs to baseballs, yo. Dancing on the path, uh. Dancing on the path, yeah. Dancing on the path, feel me flow. I'm about to do this, not real slow, uh. Dancing on the path, train, mathematically adding the subtractions of fat dividends and blistering facts. I'm tearing it up under bright lights with white tights made with satin from Brooklyn. Get tooken like I'm Latin. What's up? I meant that. It's respect. Hit the deck, pass them out. Get the tech from audio into my breath. Cut the cord, I'm dead. Truly yours, never stop. Turk MC, getting fuzzy, funky on the lot. Never stop, better rock the spot. Getting nasty with hip hop. And rock in the studio, who knew me though? Julio Uno, yo soy turco, mucho gusto puto Hablo mucho in English and Spanish You can't have this, cause I plan this Having five friends trying to man a track list Push the button, getting nothing might be loving White and skinny, handsome, no ransom, big enough and funny Uh, gotta show, watch me go get it Yeah, watch me go get it, max the credit Fax the FedEx, tax the man to forget it Haven't been to bed yet, boom done, not dead yet That's what my boy Bill just said not dropping dead for no one, son. Having fun on the microphone, trying to be known from this lasting podcasting. Asking for cash has no lasting impression. Don't miss the message, catch the definition. Sifting through my lyrical session, feeding him bird seed through his little intestine. Testing Mr. Perry with my best questions. Stand up, Stella, bring the guest in. Forgetting who the best is, just remember who said this. Uh, everybody stop. Everybody stop, feel the real pop. Yeah, what's up? Microphone. John Show. From hip hop to ballet. Oh, Only walking music. Yeah, a little away. walking. Wow, room is hot. How is everybody doing? Another lovely lady, Sarah Rathbun here, health and wellness coach. You'll decide. How are you? Hi, fine. All right. Welcome, that sounded sir. good. Welcome. Thank you very much. Egal Perry. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you look wonderful. The room is, I know, it's very, it's freezing. I get it, I get it. <laughs> I understand. Um, how are you doing besides the, uh, the humidity and I'm, all that I'm stuff? Good, I'm good. Don't worry, this will be the best 30 minutes of your life, hopefully. <laughs> um, well, you came, I was talking a little bit outside and I said, you know what, uh, a few weeks ago, um, a wonderful girl that I know and her roommates, uh, this girl, 
and her roommates who are dancers were talking about Perry Dance, Perry Dance, Perry Dance, and it was the back of my mind and my my director friend from Israel, which you're from, mm -hmm. and I have two, he's, two of my best friends are from Israel and he's one of them, uh, sent me a documentary that he did about Perry Capizio Dance Center and I saw it one morning on Vimeo and I said, this is so interesting, it's well done, I'm gonna call this guy, I'm gonna contact this guy, I'm gonna, I don't care, I have a show, Boom Done Live, it's very young, but I'm gonna reach out for the stars and I emailed your assistant and I got you on. He said I couldn't do it, I said, okay. <laughs> you put don't, the challenge don't. out there, Gal. Yeah. you're not gonna get him. And yet you're here. It's really easy. <laughs> yeah, no, well that's a whole other show. But you know, um, it's, it's, it's great to have you here. Thank I you. mean, I, I don't know if, I mean, I, I wanna start with, um, you know, I, I know that you got exposed. He's a, Egal Perry is a choreographer, dancer, um, visionary. I've read a lot about him. I've only known about him for a month now, so I can't say I've been a, a fan for years, you know, because I don't, that, that, that wouldn't be honest. Um, but I know that you were exposed to dance at a young age at seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to be a dancer, and I started uh, around your age, actually. And it was very, how I started was I wanted to be an athlete. And that wasn't working out for me because I wasn't, I wasn't big enough to play where the big boys were playing, but I was fast and strong enough, but that wasn't cutting it. So they said, why don't you become a dancer? Because I took Kung Fu. <laughs> That's a big switch. I, oh, I took, we're cutting in sports. Well, you I, should dance, Terrell. No, because I took Kung Fu for like seven or eight years, okay. and I was a fighting champion. I met Brandon Lee when I was 11. I've talked about this before, wow. and I got into acting first time ever. And they said, you're very stiff, but you, you can move. And I said, okay. So I got into a dance company at the school, and I got into an Israel, uh, Israeli folk dancing company, which I wanted you to talk about it, mm -hmm. which, which, which I want you to talk about. So I guess just start with when you were seven and how you got into dance when you were 17. Uh, um, yeah, at seven, I, just, I was just exposed to dance because my mom actually really loved the arts and loved dance. And we had an opportunity to see uh, a soloist from the Royal Ballet yeah. who came to Israel and performed in a kibbutz near, near Tiberias. I'm from Tiberias. Tiberias. In Israel, yeah, which is in the north. Okay. And uh, uh, I went to see the performance. There was uh, Nurey Ben Fontaine danced. Yeah. And I was just... Uh, which is amazing, by yeah, the way. <laughs> Nureyev. Oh. If, uh, if anybody uh, in the room doesn't know Nureyev, Rudolf Nureyev and, and, and Fontaine, they're just, Margot Fontaine yeah. they're just like whatever... Everybody in this room does something talented-wise, and it's especially like this guy working with audio right now. You can't really see him because he's the, the camera's not on him. He's a musician, and he it's the best of the best of music. music and, and so... I just wanted to say that. Go so ahead. I was exposed to dance and I fell in love with it and went home and I thought, let me see if I can do anything. I couldn't do anything. I was as stiff as you can imagine. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I, don't, I'm not, I don't have a flexible body, Okay. actually. And people say, how, how do you do what you do? And it's just a matter of doing it for many years. But I, I'm really not, I'm not the typical body for a dancer, actually. Hmm. So I thought, okay, uh, never going to dance. Okay. And later, uh, I was um, exposed to a, um, like an opportunity to do folk dancing. Yeah. When I was in my eighth grade, ninth grade, and so on. Yeah. Uh, and that actually got me more into the amateur professional dancing because we we formed a company that did uh, folk dancing and we performed for tourists. Oh, wow. Who, who came to, okay. to Israel, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was asking Charon, can you explain to the audience, for those who don't know, because I did a little bit of research on you yesterday, what is Israeli folk dancing? Can you explain the style or yeah. the type of music you play? I mean, I know folk music from the, Ameri you know, the yeah. American folk yeah. music. Yeah, Israeli folk dancing is actually a very, very eclectic type of dancing because it comes from many different countries. Okay. So mm -hmm. when, we, when we say Israeli folk dancing, we can do something that comes from Poland okay. and something that comes from Yemen and something that comes from uh, uh, Morocco and, and, and so there are many 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 different styles and uh, it became something that uh, like a, a cohesion of that okay. became something that, that we call Israeli. Uh, the typical Israeli folk dancing is the Hora which, yeah. is, which is just a, a six-step thing. One, I, two, I know three, it. four, five, six. I That's actually it. know it. The Hora Or. Uh -huh. The Hora Or, yes. yeah. I, 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 I can do it for you. And people just dance. Basically, okay. it's a social dance. It's so it's not, not very complicated. It's meant to be social. It's and fun very simple, and, and it's social, yeah. and people just get together and dance in circles. And that's it. But it, it became some, um, when I did it, it, we did it kind of professionally, semi-professionally. Okay. So there were choreographers and so on, and it became something of a show. 
So we did you add your own? Did you and your group add your own absolutely. little? Absolutely. Okay, so this, this is, absolutely. Your own little. So that was yeah. Your that own was touch, touch, your own touch flavor. with yeah, okay. like playing with the little choreography and so on. I used to also in, in this show. I used to uh, with uh, two other girls who were in my class about the same age. Yeah. We we formed a trio. And we sang, and I played the guitar, and uh, oh. which I never studied. I just played. Played. And uh, we formed not not your electric guitar. That, no, a little that, guitar. No. Yeah, folk yeah. music. You know. Yeah, folk yeah. Music. You don't want to plug yeah. in. The Spanish guitar. Right. Beautiful. And we sang for the the people, and uh, something we just loved to do, and we just did. Was it street performance, or were you in a? Like usually, a hall usually we would group? go to not not so much. Sometimes in the street. Okay. And sometimes in like hotel, um, you know, like ballrooms and stuff like that. Okay. And they would gather the people for, for dinner or something like that, and then there would be a little show, Israeli folk show. And, and then I joined a company um, that was a professional company that, that was called Carmon. The, the yeah. guy who, yeah, who ran it was uh, Jonathan Carmon, who was actually a Romanian who immigrated to Israel and was gung-ho for dance. Yeah, yeah. Formed this company, professional company, and we did what was called the Grand Musical of Israel. Yeah, that's a big thing. And we right? toured with that. We came to the United States. We toured here for three months. Yeah. We went for, uh, to South Africa for a month. And during these four months, I was exposed to other dancers who did professional dancing, like modern dance, ballet, jazz. That was the first time I ever took an actual class. Yeah. Was when I was on tour, and one of the dancers gave us a warm up, which was a, a Matt Mattox jazz warm up. Yeah. And that's, that was the beginning of my exposure to actual dance. Wow. Um, yeah. So one thing led to another. I went back to Israel. For and like 10 years, I think. Or was that... No, that was actually... I, what happened was I finished high school yeah. kind of early. I, I um, skipped a, a year. Yeah. So I finished early. And in Israel, when you, when you want to study in university, uh, you have to do it after you go to the army. Yeah. Or you have a special program where, where you do the studies first and then you do your army program. Israel doesn't mess around. You go to the army. There's yeah. no if and oh, well, yeah, yeah. you go to the, the army, army no matter what. Okay, it, right, even, yeah. even for females, it's, it's yeah. not. Yes, 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 no one's yeah. exempt from that. No, no matter. If you're no a human. Yeah. Yeah. Why have a bad right. back? Okay, great. Well, <laughs> get, it, get it fixed and well, you go to the army. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. So anyway, uh, I wanted to go to study medicine. Okay. Actually, but I was too young for the program and too young to go to the army, and so I had to wait. And in the meantime, I thought, okay, I'll join this Carmon group and go abroad. Yeah. And never went back to study the medicine. Never. Oh yeah. Okay. That's it. That was That's why we're here, I, I guess today. Yeah. Well, so, so, so how was Israel at that time? That, that when you were in that, I mean, I mean, that was. Well, first of all, men didn't in folk dancing, yes, yeah. but in in ballet or modern, men didn't dance. No. So there were very very few. There, it's very rigid. It just wasn't accepted. No, or? it was just that that men didn't do it. It wasn't popular. Uh, it wasn't popular. Okay. And it was, of course, a little rigid. It's not like today. I mean, uh, at the time, anything like dancing for men or homosexuality or anything like that yeah. was very, very closeted. Yeah. Uh, now it's totally different. And, and then, uh, yeah, definitely, yeah, it's more yeah, opened up. And yeah. That's, I mean, applauded that. Um, <laughs> but you, then you went to, you got pulled to Holland. You, you went your experience I, in Holland. I decided to go. You decided to go. Yeah, so what happened Not pulled, was, I mean like you got propelled in some way. You, yes. You, you wanted yeah, to go. You, yeah. Actually, so, so what happened when I, when I started dancing, I was in the army. Yeah. Uh, I did dancing in the army back yeah, to separately. back. separately? <laughs> yeah. Did you combine the two or that would have been I did combine the two. It was, okay. I, I mean, I, I was, it was arranged for me that I could... Um, do my army task during okay. the day and go to dance. Did you get a evening. lot of flack from your fellow uh, yeah. comrades? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole yes. other conversation, right? <laughs> so, yeah. And um, when I finished the army, I've already been dancing in the company for like three or almost, almost four years. Okay. And so I decided I wanted to go somewhere else for a little bit and see, you know, because at the time when you were in Israeli yeah. or in Israel, to go abroad was a big thing. Yeah. It wasn't like today, you buy a ticket, you go. At the time, for example, the money was restricted. If you wanted to go abroad, they only let you take $100 yeah. out of the country. Oh, or things like that. Yeah, I mean, it, wow, was, it was very strict. Good luck. Yeah. And uh, not even that, just to go abroad was, was a big thing. Yeah. So I decided to go abroad. <laughs> so let's do it. So I went to Holland. I joined a small company there. 
uh, a friend of mine was already there, so he said, why don't you come here, try this company? So that's what I did, okay. um, and danced there for a year. And while I was there, uh, I started, uh, that was the first time that I started teaching, ventured into teaching. How, what, oh, how age, what, what, were your, what was your age? My huh? age, uh, I was about 21. 21, wow. Yeah. You knew that young that you wanted to teach? That's great. Yes, yeah, okay. I, was, I was really drawn to that, to okay. teaching and to choreographing. To, take, to have that under you, at any point in your life, there's something has to turn in you, you yeah. know, like to, to be able to take, have the confidence to stand up in front of a group and, yeah, uh, and, and that, lead them, you know? Yeah, I mean, I didn't even think about it. Yeah. I guess, I guess you know, when you, when you do it, you do it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, the first class was hard. I mean, I, yeah. I, it took me all night to prepare one class. So I didn't sleep. Okay. You cared, though. You cared. You, you weren't yes, some fly-by-night. I mean, but you've been, I mean, I was reading, you've been everywhere. I mean, Almost. you've been to a lot of places. Yes, a lot of you've places. You've been to a lot of places and danced there and, and performed there in pieces. Yeah. You, were, you worked in the opera at the Met with uh, yeah. um, John uh, Butler. I mean, I... Um, uh, no, New York City Opera. New, New, York, City, yeah. New York City Opera. Sorry. Right. He has worked with uh, the, yeah. the Met. With the Met. Um, that's just great. Um, that's all. I mean, as far as that... I mean, like, where, where haven't you been? Uh, I mean, have you, have you been to Turkey? I haven't you... been to Turkey. I was yeah. just about ah. to say, <laughs> Wow, well, I, I don't <laughs> know. Let's set what, this yeah. up. I actually don't. I have good yeah, friends. Let's set this up. Sorry, <laughs> Bill. Yeah. Let's set this up. Yeah, let's, let's all go to uh, Turkey. Yeah. Forget upstate New York. Go Turkey first. I don't know. Go I don't know if we want to even talk about it's, Turkey. I don't it's even. It's a little it's tough. It's uninteresting yeah, yeah. right now. Might not have, yeah. I have a bunch of radio guys. Politics. This is not a political show. No, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But it can be. But one, no, there, there's one many minute. countries I haven't been to, but yeah. many countries I have. And you and got to, so let's, let's try to jump forward a little bit. I mean, we have not really far forward, but you, you got to the States and about 30 years ago. I mean, we're in the 30-year anniversary. 30-year anniversary I'm of Story so, Dance. I got to the States 36 years ago. Yeah. That's, yeah, very that's, good. I'm so, like, oh, yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> that's what they say, no joke. <laughs> so I got you at a good time. Yeah. I mean, a, a great monumental time. So let's go back and talk about Perry Dance okay. and how that started. Yes. Again, go ahead. Okay, so here's another story. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So my older brother, Ruben, uh, came here, after I came here, he yeah. came here also, and he worked with a guy, an Israeli guy, who had a um, big business of, of clothing stores. Okay. And he was opening stores all over the place. Uh, you know. And my brother worked with him, and kind of one day they talked, and he interested him in finding out about me. And yeah. one day I got a phone call, Yeah. and he said, uh, Hey, Gal, uh, I heard this guy called me. He said, Hey, Gal, I know your brother, Ruben, and he said you want to open a dance school. <laughs> So I just said, had yeah. some good luck, a guy. You've yeah. been very lucky. So yeah. said, Would said, you like yeah. to open a school? Yeah, sure. And he said, uh, mm -hmm. well, I can help you. So actually, because he was in the business that he was, he was building these stores. He had a group of people who worked with him in construction. Yeah. His people who did construction to open stores. And they would, they would open a store within a week, two weeks, do the construction, open it. And so he gave me these people. Basically, he paid for them. And they constructed the first Perry Dance. Nice. Wow. This is in 1983. I mean, 30 years in ago, this is 1983 in yeah. New York we City. We opened in 83. What was the location? The location was 33 East 13th Street. Okay. There it, it, it was, and it's, it's still, has it right changed? Now that, yeah, right now that building was bought by ABC Carpet. Mm. So the whole building, the ABC carpet took over yeah. the building. And I can only imagine what the city was like in 1983. You probably cannot compare. The, it must be not, such a night and day difference that between was what very East different. 13th Street is now and what very it different. was actually at years that ago. Yeah, actually at that time, the whole area of Union Square mm -hmm. was very bad. It was very bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very bad. bad. And that was under the Reagan administration, not uh, to get political, right? That was uh, yeah, Ronald, double R, yeah. yeah, Ronald Reagan and yeah. Uh, yeah. Koch was the... Not that that matters. I'm just thinking that the economy yeah. was right. pretty good then. A lot of drugs, a lot of prostitution. The economy was good, but a lot of... Yeah, a lot of parts of New York was just abandoned. No yeah. Really, yeah. You know. So actually, I, on my way to work every day, I wouldn't pass through the you know, square. I would go square around. Go around. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. It's a different yeah. Wow. Now it's, now it's great. Oh, it's I mean, now it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean. So I, I opened my school. Yeah. That's how I opened my school with with a little bit of an investment from from this friend, and the rest of it is two year, ten years of struggle actually. Struggle. I mean, you okay? Talk about. Because, I want to yeah, hear because, about that. Because actually, uh, it was very difficult to get it into the black. 
Yeah. It was always in the red in the mm -hmm. beginning. It was hard to get students. It was. I mean, it, it took a long time I, I, to actually I, get in into the film. The, in the film, the short documentary of, yeah. that my friend made. Uh, uh, and that was Avia. yeah. That, that was uh, Avi. Yeah, that was yeah. talked about. Um, that, that struggle. Speak on that. A little right. More. Right. It, it, well, first of all, uh, what'd you do? What'd you do to get more? I mean, like this is for anybody building a show or like this. Well, like, what I live did, itself. Yeah. We're trying to build a show, and it's not like uh, it's not. You know, it, it takes a back seat to what this is. Yeah. But I, I mean, what, how did you do that? One thing that I did was I went around the city and I talked to different teachers and yeah. I went to see classes and classes that I liked. I would talk to the teacher and said, hey, you want to teach at Paradise? And so those who wanted to came. So the school said, yeah, I want to teach here. Brought the students yeah. with them. So a lot of teachers who came in the beginning actually came in with some students with them. Groups of people. Yeah. He said very clearly, one thing I found um, interesting about it, in 1983, he said uh, uh, when you were, when you were in a dan dance classes at the time were very rigid about what you, what you studied. Yes. Ballet, modern, so on and so forth. But yeah. what you did was your initial idea for the school was to open it up to all sorts of dance. Absolutely. Come in with, you know, you don't have to be, we're not going to teach you one form, we'll uh, teach you many forms of dance. Right. And it's here you can improv and take chances and so on and so forth. Was that an idea you had the second you opened the school? That it would Even before. Even before, okay. because before that I was exposed when I was here uh, to the fact that, that people who did ballet only did ballet and right. only did it uptown. And people yeah. who did modern only did modern and did it downtown. It was compartmentalized. And it was very, very, yeah. yeah. Very no one ate in the same table. No one yeah. and, I, and I thought, why? I mean, yeah. uh, you know, it's like, why not be together and dance together and yeah. influence each other and so on. There's, there's already been an influence of modern dance on ballet and ballet on modern and so sure. on. But... The people kept it segregated. Would you say? Would you be as bold, Would you be so bold as to say you were the first school to incorporate? I different don't know if I was the first and only in one. York, okay. I, I I can't say that, but well, I was one of the ones who yeah. who did it kind of more out there. Okay, uh, that I can say. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't easy though, because people. I, I until today I even hear. Nah, I'm not going downtown. What? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. What do they? They live and, between and, uh, 64th Street and uh, uh, right. so, you know so West people, 100. Well, I live uptown. I don't right, go right. downtown. I don't or, go downtown. You know, wow. so, bring yeah, them here. It's still, it's still let's, in let's New York today. To them, it's still like that. But obviously, it's different. Uh, I mean, it's opened up a lot. Right. And, yeah. Excellent. So, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I, 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 that's pretty interesting, though. I mean, you know, people will get stuck in their own ways and stuff like that. But I, I'm just interested in how. I mean, 30 years ago, there was no hip hop. I mean, there was hip hop, but it was very, I mean, nobody's dancing in a. In there wasn't, a, actually. It started a little bit later. More, yeah. yeah hip hop and rap was in the baby stages. I mean, 79, yeah. 80, really, really, but it was really, really yeah. started. I think 84, 85 is when it started to hit the airwaves. Exactly, but people, not, yeah. 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 Um, and so, where's, I mean, I, you started the school, but right away you had the company. And the, speak about how the company is important to have the community, like you talk about community, um, you know, bringing students and and having like their on the outset or like to, to look forward to possibly being in a company yeah that's pretty cool yeah to, to have those people commingling in the same community well, center what usually happens in the world yeah. is companies are formed yeah they kind of grow succeed and so on and then they say we should have a school that will then le bring students to the company I did it the other way around. Like yeah. recruit, I opened the school and talent. knowing that I will also open a company yeah. uh, almost right away because they have to be together. Does, does that mean, I mean, anybody, can anybody do dance there? I mean, that has legs and, you know, has a that has warm... Yes, that, that uh, has uh, yes, but there are different programs. So, so we really, literally accommodate everybody. Do you audition people as students? Depending on the program, yeah. So, okay. for example, if you take our certificate program, which is yeah. a two-year program that's now... Uh, finish the third year of that program. Okay. Uh, that's a program that uh, students come to study for two years. Yeah. They have to audition. We take them only at a certain level. So yeah. they, they must have already some kind of a background, background. Uh, and talent and so on and so on. And then we take them into the program. It's limited in, in size. We can't take, you know, hundreds of people. Yeah. Uh, it's a very professional program, so they get to, to work with the best of the best of teachers, choreographers, and so on. Yeah. They get to perform a lot. Um, so a program that is with addition. Our children's program, for example, we have over 750 children in the program. Really? Wow. Yeah. 
children, uh, children meaning like children, what age? Like children anywhere from eight? two to eighteen. Okay, so that's yeah. So the whole range Classic of adult. childhood and and yeah, teens. That's, that's huge. I didn't it must read be a very that. Entertaining building. There must be a lot of fun people coming. There is building. a lot of fun. <laughs> and sometimes a lot of babies crying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is, yeah. That, is that when you leave? Or is that, <laughs> is that, is that, that when you take your that's, that's when you take your one I day smile when other people go like ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you seem like you got a. You seem you didn't. You you don't seem stressful. You seem. I don't know. I'm a good actor. Yeah. Oh my god. Um. Uh, wait, wait. Stella, is there yes, something that you want to ask? Um. Well, you can't. Uh, yeah, that'll. Dang, but it's so yeah, high. Stand, stand up. Stand up. Yeah. It'll pick you up. You don't have to do it. Okay. Just stand up. Okay. Just leave it. Yeah. Are you are you very tough on your students? I'm tough in a good way. Yeah. yeah. No, seriously, I'm really demanding. I'm very demanding. I'm very, I'm very clear with when something is not right to let them know that it's not right, but never in a derogative or mm. in a negative way. I I don't believe in negativity. There's something I like that you That's said right. that, that that you said in one of the articles I read. Um, you you're exposing something to somebody who may find it difficult or may find uh, an approach. That they're just uncomfortable with it, and you're like, "Hey, you're a professional. I'm a professional. I'm just giving it to you. You want to take it? Yeah. You can take it." Yeah. But and there know. are other classes. I mean, there are other schools you can go to where you can just kind of mess around and learn the basics. But if you you, you teach, if you're studying with someone of this caliber, you want to you're going there not to mess around. So it's well, you, important you, that you learn something when you leave every day. That you learn something. I take into consideration that people who come. I mean, there's a lot of people who come for recreation, and that's fine. Okay. Yeah. And uh, but I take into consideration that people who come, for example, for the certificate program, are dancers who want to really dance professionally. Right. So. You know, I, I mean, it's it's not the kind of situation where I force them to do anything, but I do challenge them, and uh, let them let them take the challenge to the best way they can. Yeah, because and when I they go out them. in the real world, they're going to be challenged Absolutely. right off the bat, so they Absolutely. should know what that what that's like. Yeah. So were you, when did you st were you still performing when you came in '83? Were you still actively dancing in, in? Yes, but not like a regular company member. Okay. So I was still performing. Yeah. All right. Uh huh. So you're able to take those experiences to your students. Yes, and, absolutely. Okay. Awesome. And when is it too late to start dancing? Uh, uh, dead. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, yeah, it's it's never uh -huh. too late. It depends on on how much you want to achieve and how far you want to go and in what direction. I mean, there are physical limitations. Yeah. So if you want to be a really good classical ballet dancer, like in Urayev, you yeah. know, obviously you cannot start when you're 30 because the body will not do it anymore. It doesn't mean you cannot dance. Dance professionally, dance beautifully, but not ballet. So okay, that was a good question, Stella. Thank you. I have one uh, thing to, to, to bring, to, to ask you. Is there something else that you want to say? Because I have a list of 10 questions I ask all my guests that not... This is curtailed to you, though. This is, it's, a, it's a moment in the show that I ask right. 10 questions. No exposés. Uh, and, and, you know, I want to quell any worries. Um, but is there anything that you want to promote, talk about? I mean, obviously... Well, already... obviously promote my school. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Perry Dance Capizio Center. Perry, Perry Dance Capizio Center. It's right. already on the website it's at perrydance.com, and it's P-E-R-I-D-A-N-C-E.com. Yeah. Um, anything else? Uh, uh, and the company. The company, the Perry Dance Contemporary Dance Company. Perry Dance uh, Contemporary Dance Company. Right, because we've been in the last, since we moved to the new building yeah. on 126 East 13th Street, yeah. in collaboration, in partnership with Capizio, yes. Ballet Makers, uh, we brought back the company which was uh, before didn't work as much because we were kind of yeah. uh, traveling around okay. <laughs> with the school. So uh, since then, the company has been working a lot, and now we're going on tour, for example, to... Okay, to, so we can't uh, see you We can't see you right now. We can't see your, your company right now, like this whole crew. Right, not, not at the moment. Yeah, I know, but, right. like, but, but soon. Yeah, I mean, but we're doing a lot. We, we, yeah. Yeah. You gotta have one so, question as a, as a filmmaker. Uh, you mentioned something which is seeing dance live. It's important yeah. for people that are listening to this to know that da dance, it, yes, you can see it, you can watch it on television. And yeah. There are some great uh, documentaries that you can watch and films you can watch, but it's important to go to live yes. dance. 
So I just wanted you to stress that because as a filmmaker, we're having this conversation about watching films on iPads. And the reality is when you see a beautiful film, right. you really should see that film in the theater with yes. other people. You should, experience, you should have that communal experience. So yes. I just want you to speak uh, to the idea that it's important to see these things, to support dance in a live environment. Not absolutely, absolutely. Uh, dance is one of those things that, that actually all the performing arts you yeah. can see on video or you can see, uh, but the, the experience on stage or in front of people is not the same. Never, right. uh, performance on video or in film never gets to the height of what you, what you experience or see live. Yeah. Right. Uh, also because the interaction between the dancers and, between, and what's happening on stage is always fresh. Mm -hmm. and it's never the same. And space, too. It's important to be so, around yes. dance because space is yeah. important. Well, and it changes. So, sharing space with the and, dancers. And, and this is an addition. I believe that the, the moments that you're watching on video have already happened. And so when you're in that room yeah. and that moment is trying to be connected to the people that are in there or the, the organisms that are in there have already passed. Even yeah. though they can right. affect you on video because we watch movies over and over again. But... Yeah, I agree. Yeah, is what I'm saying. Live dance, and especially when you in see York. film, or when you see film on, in, in dance, of, I've never enjoyed seeing dance in film because it's edited. It's not. Right, it's right. not yeah. live. That, it's that, edited. That, you know. Although, although Fred Astaire, aha, Fred Astaire used to do dance. I, I don't. Know if you, I guess you know. You what? look a little like Fred Astaire. <laughs> 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 oh my God! A bit like old Frank. You, you do. That's very interesting. <laughs> but he, he, he used Bowie, to be. Yes. He was such a technician that they. It was his. His. Uh, the shots they would take of him would be like one or two at right. most. Yeah. That's it. Right. And that's pretty amazing. Yeah. And you can yeah. see that how the movie's not in uh, unedited. It's like yeah. or it's not edited. What's your favorite place to see live music, uh, live dance in the city? Any from top to bottom. I I like things. small theater, smaller theaters. Okay. So you know, for anything that modern, like the Joyce Theater. Oh yeah. Yeah. And your uh, work is very intimate. I noticed some of your work. You're not a. You don't. You're not grand, and you've done grand stuff, but your stuff is very I've intimate. I've done grand stuff, scale. but I like to do something a little bit more intimate for, mm -hmm. for a theater like The Joyce or something like that, because, uh, the ex again, the experience of the audience then is much more... It's more tangible, yeah. More, yeah, yeah. 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 Wonderful. But when you, when you go to see a big ballet like Swan yeah. Lake, to see that at The Joyce, it's not going to no, work. So. No, no. Yeah. You need something prodigious. Go to the yeah. right. So, okay. So, listen, we have ten... I have ten questions. I don't want to show anybody. Nobody gets to see these. And they're, you know, don't worry, we didn't dig up any records of you in Israel. And you check out the awkward um, music we have for the 10 questions. Just to get in your head. <laughs> Just to keep you off center. Oh, yeah. Water. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Unnerving. Uh, uh, my good friend Jamie has constructed the, the this is the, called the L scale, and he plays this. So <laughs> Stop it, Jamie, you're getting in it's my a, head. It's a, it's a. <laughs> It's a very dissonant sound, and it's it's wonderful. It makes no you shit. cringe. I love it. Um, I actually have a I actually play drums against that in a rock version. It's it's that must have been a great rock we should, show. We should write the whole song to that. All right. So oh there there they are. All right. So ten questions. We call this provoke the folk. We're not really provoking. We're just we're just talking. Some of them are fun. Some of them are, are real and interesting. You know. So number one, Baryshnikov or Nijinsky. Baryshnikov. I want to know why. Because uh, Nijinsky, even though he was unique and certainly a genius in yeah. his time, yeah. was still limited to that the Agalev Russian style and did not do uh, what Baryshnikov later came and did, which yeah. is open up dance to modern to anything. Okay, fair so, enough. I just wanted to, you know, it's like... Both, I haven't seen him do the moonwalk yet, yeah, so I'm both, gonna hold... Both uh, unique, both uh, amazingly <laughs> musical, etc., etc. Yeah. But, yeah. Cool. You answered, you answered. That's all we're looking for. So you're, the people that know you and listen to you go, oh, I want to, I want to know. <laughs> I want to, why didn't he say that? Plus, oh. I met, I met him, so... Versus, never I, met, I, versus, never I, met Nijinsky. I met well, versus, I just said hello. I met, yeah. yeah, me too. But n hey, I'm not trying to, sh you know, yeah. upstage you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, number two, Charlie Chaplin or Buster Keaton? Ah, Charlie Chaplin. Uh, no, too. no genius like that ever born. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm Chaplin a big fan. Charlie Chaplin fan. Oh, maybe when, okay, I was, but, um, when I was yeah. 19 years old, I made a film about. This I played Charlie Chaplin in a film I directed before I went to NYU to get into NYU, and it was called The Sunflower Journey, and I think you bought those. Oh. Anyway, it, just I a just... a little uh, FYI, uh, Jamie Gnea went to the same school that Charlie Chaplin went to. Oh, really? 
Really? really? Yeah, St. Francis Xavier's College in uh, Liverpool. Can you say that? We say that again on... on, on St. Uh, Francis Xavier's uh, Boys College in Liverpool. Uh, Char Charlie... St. Francis Xavier's Boys College is in Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> it's where Charlie Chaplin went. So Really? Yeah, you have a British there. accent. He's... I'm he, Scottish, yeah. Are you Scottish? Yeah. Ooh. Done. Learned something. <laughs> I love it. We have yeah. such an array of people here Ooh, uh, yeah. with some interesting... That came out of absolute nowhere, and I love it. So number three, interestingly enough, Fred Astaire or Gene Kelly? These are difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. Well, this is a tough show. Mm. There's no, I, there's I, no... If you don't ask me why, I'll say Fred Astaire. Okay, I won't say why. <laughs> Fred Astaire. Fred Astaire yeah. is the answer. That's yeah. his final answer. Okay. Number four. Sababa or Balagan? <laughs> Actually, both, yeah. So, uh, I like Balagan. Okay. Yeah. Now, now I just told my listeners this and, and viewers, whatever. So, Sababa and Balagan are basically the only Hebrew words I know. And, <laughs> and, and, and none I, of them is Hebrew, by the way. None of them is Hebrew? No, it's what, not, what, what are they? Sababa is Arabic. Okay. And Balagan, I don't even have... I, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know. It's something people... It's kind of a word. Slang. It's something that I know that I've learned from my Israeli friends. Like, Sababa means good, and Balagan yeah. means bad. So you go, hey, is everything, is everything Sababa? They're like, yeah, it better not be Balagan. So it's <laughs> Balagan actually means uh, kind of a mess. M a mess. Yeah. Yeah, like a mess yeah. is what it means. It's not neat. It's kind of a mess. Yeah. It's kind of like this room a little what, bit. What? <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> Number five, get out. <laughs> But this room is also Sababa, don't worry. Oh, okay. oh thank you. I mean, okay. The world wouldn't be a good place if it didn't have the yin and yang. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's a Chinese restaurant down the road. Um, <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to plug that. No. Um, number five. One place you haven't performed in the world that you'd love to. That I haven't performed? Paris. Ah. You've been there, though. Been there many times. But I've you never performed, performed there. there. Yeah. Something French you want to have a conversation, maybe? I don't know. Do you, which... I would like, like, I would like to go to <laughs> Théâtre de la Ville or yeah. Uh, yeah. somewhere. Somewhere? <laughs> wow. Like Guys, we, we, we are, we are, we are global. Say something. We are global here on Boom Done Live. We have, we have, we have French, we have, we have white people. Um, <laughs> From Queens, New York. <laughs> so, forget about it. Um, so number six, what do you think of shows like Do You Think You Could Dance? Well, these are problematic. So, and, and, Spoken yeah. like a true teacher. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let me, know, let me tell you the good and the bad that I think. Go ahead. The good is that they expose dance to the masses. And people can see dance, people who've never seen dance before, and have seen dance through these shows for the first time. Yeah. However, these shows are very commercial. They only go for... Uh, kind of the tricks of the trade rather than the substance of the trade. Yeah. Make it look easy. And it, it think uh, it's make it look great, make it look, uh, you know, appealing, what? flashy, whatever, but not for the substance. The substance, if, if there were more substance there, I would say that's the best be on, thing in the world. Then it would be on PBS, it wouldn't be on whatever channel. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, you know, unfortunately, these shows uh, actually took dance to somewhere where uh, we have to pull it back. Yeah. Uh, in, into the, yeah. I'm glad uh, I asked that. Mm -hmm. I feel very good about that. But they have, they have, they have the value. I mean, they Someone give him a pat on the back. Uh, Thank you. Sorry, there's Pat Turan on Thanks. the back. I think he needs it. Um, yeah, I'm an attention getter. Um, You're my hero. Number seven. <laughs> that's Bill. He has many voices. No, number seven. What makes a dancer a great dancer? Um, when a dancer uh, knows how to connect to what they want to say, so they don't just perform movement, but actually say something within it. And that happens like in acting, like yeah. in anything else, yeah, um, by maturing into it. Um, with that, dancers need actually to be great, great, great dancers. Yeah. They also need the good physical conditions, the good training, good stretch. Uh, musicality is number one. Yeah. In, so it's in like dancing. playing music. Musicality is important. To it's so music, important. Have an emotional connection to the music. Yeah, not the music, the musicality. The musicality. It's the, yeah. Okay. It's understanding rhythm. It's understanding the nuance of things. It's not just... Actually, probably uh, is what separates the great from the okay. Well, yeah, very good yeah, but I, I think it's that. not only in dance. It's in 
yeah any performing art okay you know uh, I, I always when when i i was always told um i i've, I've heard and I've, when i was dancing it's like don't use your face too much like there could be a natural expression of just like if it's relaxed where the emotion of the kinetic energy goes but if you're you know not trying to grimace but some people just want to be like, oh, oh yeah. but that's yeah, not no. like showing facial expressions is is not very good it's like almost like no. wanting, wanting to wear a mask might be better you know right. um, so what do you think about that and yeah and it, in dance it's hard because dance is physical yeah so you know, 99% of dancers actually make the mistake of doing too much. Yeah. And too much, put too much effort into it and too much muscle into it and yes. so on. And if you watch my class, you will see that 50% that of what I say is relax. Yeah. <laughs> relax. Yeah. And relax. Yeah. 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 So, so, yeah, uh, it, they have to find a way to do it more naturally. Yeah. So dancers think that, they, they, that there's something superficial in dance, but there shouldn't be. No, they, try too hard. they they must go back to the natural. Yeah, I'm I'm impressed. Um, so number eight, what is your favorite movie that involves dance? None. Ooh, well, how do you, where do I see that? I don't like I don't like dancing movies, and I can't tell you why. Okay, but it always seems artificial. Okay, and it's not real because I'm I'm in the dance world. And I know what real dance is, and I know what real interaction between dancers yeah. are, is, and so on. And when I see it in movies, I go like, nah. What about musicals, so though? Is, musical, uh, is a musical closer to, say, dance, like a Sound of Music or a West Side Story? Is that closer I to... I love those. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, I was thinking more that you're no, talking that about the no, narrative dance. No, or, no, I'm talking about ever. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. something like West Side Story or something like that is yeah. phenomenal. When dancing oh, oh, is great, but oh, it's oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. When, love. When, when Oklahoma yeah. makes that big musical break, I mean, that's going into a dark. I went to see Oklahoma a million times. I went to see uh, West Side Story when I was this big, more than a million times. So, it's safe, on the big screen. so <laughs> it's safe to say, I can ask the question again, what is your favorite movie that involves dancing? <laughs> I would say West Side Story. Actually. All right. <laughs> Boom, done, yeah. Done, done. But in that Boom, respect, I, I, really, I really thought you meant like movie about no, dance. Yeah. Um, well, they're yeah, not that like, many. I like, mean, uh, the, the turning, turning point. point or, yeah, that's the big one. Yeah, yeah. the turning point wasn't bad, really, okay. but, uh, yeah. Or Black Swan, yeah. Big dancer, what was her name? Uh, There's very famous, uh, just recently did a documentary. I can't remember. Big dancer? Name. Like, huge, like, body weight? Oh, or, like... Yeah. A guy uh, or... Latin... Latin. Latin. Uh, very Latin. famous, very famous. It'll come to us. Maybe yeah, we'll get it come. next time. Yeah, anyway. So, number nine. What is your most inspirational moment ever on stage? <laughs> Good. Uh, <laughs> well, I just danced, you know, in our thirtieth anniversary. Wow! Yeah, that, that must right. have been super emotional. It was. It was uh, an experience that that took my body, took me out of my body. Ah. Uh, yeah. Wow. It was. It was. Uh, That's great. Really special. So whoever was and there, I did, it, I did it without with with practically no rehearsals. So I just. Kind That's of, even. So who, I rehearsed a little bit, but really little because I had no time. So who, whoever was there, whoever was there was just heard now that that they were there. They experienced the great Egal Perry. <laughs> there was a the spirit and, above. That, no, really, I, I sound funny, but I, I mean well by that. Seriously, um, number ten, last one. How would you like to be remembered? Um, you you have tough questions. <laughs> I want to be famous. Uh, no, <laughs> you kind of are. To me, I, guess. I don't know. You kind of are to me. So I I don't know how I want to be remembered, but I want to be recognized for things I've done for others, for that I've influenced generations of people to to learn, to to explore, to do. That's important to me. That sounds epic. Really, <laughs> man. I one. I, I always have. I always have. Oh, uh, I didn't mean to step on that that applause. That was ridiculous. To me. <laughs> I'm, okay. I, I'm gonna fire myself after this show. Um, it's a I fun wanna, sight. I always <laughs> ask the last question. Nobody ever knows except my crew. Is uh, number it's eleven toughest question of the yeah, yeah. evening? Yeah, no, yeah. Number number eleven, me or Bill? <laughs> it's okay, there. Who's no gonna fire me? <laughs> when I say <laughs> you're both great. Awesome. Oh, oh, it's a tie. It's a tie. It's a tie. It's a tie. Okay. We're, t we're tied 2 2, and we thought you would be the tiebreaker. And I want to tell you something else. Yeah. This is the best interview I've ever had. Oh! oh I'm, done. I'm serious. Really? I'm serious. This, I'm, this really? is really great. Can you this show really my great. face for a second, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm really. I can't believe that. 
And that is, and that is. Yeah. Well, we have a special. This has been. This was decided by. Um, this was decided by when when we found out because uh, I said, "Hey, I got that guy you were talking about. You and your your dancer roommate friends, uh, Egal Perry." They're like, "No," you know. She was like, "No." She goes instantly. She said, "You got to make it an artistic show." So, um, and I think it has been so far because I always play live music. Anyway, blah blah blah. blah. My good friend this and is a roommate special treat, Egal. This is a special is, treat. Is my friend. Jamie Igneo is an opera singer, but he's going to do a Neapolitan art song for you. And oh. I want, you just, I just want to, I'll, I'll let him just do it. How about that? And I'll, I'll just let him no, play. No yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's going to be just for you. Just, just like oh, amazing! Oh, totally amazing! That you, yeah. really. that just rolled over me, and I watched over the faces Wait, of the people in the room. This is the second experience I've had of somebody singing special <laughs> in an occasion like that. I just came back from Barcelona, and a friend of mine, oh, my friend now he's my friend. I met him there. Uh, he's an opera singer, uh, actually English also. Yeah, he's Scottish, mm -hmm. but that's okay. I yeah, think the, well, they're, they're cousins. And, they're cousins. And, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, and sang for us a couple of songs like that. Was uh, second time. Wow. Yeah. Sec second, yeah. the second time that song has been sung no, to you. No, no, that, not that song, but in this kind of occasion. Really. Singing so so beautifully. So it's so it's kind of unoriginal. It's <laughs> 
<laughs> it's no. You got, I'm taking business. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. I'm taking I business. Feel, I feel very pri privileged. That's what I'm saying. We should start uh, I appreciate opera, it. living room opera. We should have, uh, you know, intimate settings, uh, living room, widescreen television. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Let's have our people talk. Hey, so, so that said, listen, I want to thank you, Egal Perry. Um, Egal, I want to call you Egal. Yeah, we're, we're friends now. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to let Bill take over and close the show while I get on the, the drum throne and close out with, with rock music. But I want to thank everybody, like every week that comes here and, and just helps produce the show. Um, I love each and every one of you. And, uh, Great show. Including you. you, Bill. <laughs> and, um, and Blake. <laughs> no blushing, and, blushing. And, and Blake. <laughs> and Blake. And also, I want to plug um, um, Blake's uh, music studio again because he's an amazing musician and singer, and he's kind of good looking. And he has a music studio, and he's going to tell you right now before Bill talks. It's uh, Black Viking Studios. www.blackvikingstudios.com. Look it up. Sweet. Yeah. All right. All right. So, hello. This has been a great interview. Thank you, Egal. This has Thank been you. another spiritually enlightened episode of Boom Dumb Live. You can check us out at boomdumblive.com. Thank you once again, Egal. Uh, Perrydance.com. Stella Valone. StellaValone.com. Nick McGee on camera. Fantastic work as always. Blake Walker. He just gave you his uh, his setup. Jamie Igneo, Opera, and also live rock music. Uh, Shara Rothburn at uh, RoomToBloomWellness.com. Thank you. Did I say your name right? <laughs> Gentlemen, let's rock and roll. <laughs> We'll see you next week, mofos. Yeah! Boomlove.com. <laughs>